uh, the people, the community. Um, what they say, farm markets don't just happen. So uh, I'll stipulate that they say that. <laughs> so is it is it all local farms who bring in their produce within a fifty mile radius? So okay. um, Berkeley County, Jefferson County, and Morgan County, and we are you know still accepting applications for vendors and farmers and because it's new and a new location we kind of need some more people <laughs> um, to get the customer flow coming through so what are you looking for in terms of application right now everything so if, um, if, we, if i got stuff i'm in pretty much okay yeah as long as you have a business license <laughs> <laughs> So we really wanted to create the venue and work together with the community and uh, Main Street Martinsburg, the Roundhouse Authority, and build something where families could really start to get back into small scale agriculture and make that economically feasible. So that's something that we did not see when we started the farm. There were a few small farm markets been nothing that showed the growth potential that we have now and I mean Catherine can share a little bit about <laughs> who made that uh, oh yeah I mean we have, we're getting a lot of support this year um, compared to in the past um, we've got funding from the Department Agri of Agriculture uh, Kent Lee and Hart and um, the West Virginia Department of yes. Agriculture and um, the Roundhouse Authority and Main Street Martinsburg and WVU Health. Um, they, they do the market bucks, which are like SNAP dollars, and then they match the SNAP dollars with fruit and veggie vouchers and um, while supplies last. <laughs> are you there five, uh, seven days a week at the Roundhouse? No, it's just Saturday from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. I see. And occasionally we'll do events where we ex extend the hours. Um, so this weekend coming up, we're having um, World Youth Skills Day where kids can come in or young adults and um, show what they do. Um, making crafts, uh, their, you know, uh, interests, or we have one kid doing a photography display and one uh, has a um, I have it written down <laughs> <laughs> always refer to your notes so oh, yeah. and, and before you go there paint a picture for me I, I've been to the roundhouse mm -hmm. and so in farmers market to me means watermelons and lettuce and and that sort of thing but now you're talking about photo photography and, and other things so the the yeah. farmers market itself is it inside the roundhouse it is inside the frog and switch building okay. which um has the gravel floor mm -hmm. um it's a huge space um and the beauty of it is in the past we've been outside so now we are indoors um undercover so rain or shine we're there and um Vendors are allowed to drive their vehicles into the building to unload and load, which, you know, really saves on damage to your products. Um, we are actually the farmers <laughs> at the market right now, and we're trying to get other farmers. You mean just you? Well, just the, as farmers, okay. yes. Um, we have Lavender Lane Farms, who is a lavender farm. Mm -hmm. So they're um, there, and we have Giddy Goblin Greenery. Uh, who does microgreens and we're looking for organic farmers um, other produce meat and dairy uh, flowers but you know we want to build the market and we want people to grow with the market so we're not looking for like large farms that are you know well established well established yeah. Well, Catherine, we've had a farm market or some semblance of in Martinsburg the last several years. Is there some continuity over what we've had in the past to what you're trying to do? Or is this a totally different venture with different people, different farms? It's building on the past. Okay. Um, currently, the vendors that are there are past vendors. Okay. And there's several new vendors which is nice and i'm still getting applications in um they're slowing down because uh, we started a little bit late into the season so all of the vendors and farmers have already made commitments elsewhere but what we really need 
is the community to come out and keep showing up um, for these people because they're working tirelessly to get their product to market all week long. And if the community doesn't show up, they're going to leave. <laughs> A problem with the roundhouse has always been access. Uh, have you been able to solve that problem? I'll let Ben take this one. <laughs> so we have been working on some access. Uh, at the train station, we have actually there's two bus routes that go to the towers all through town and stop at the station. And we can go across the walking bridge and there's handicap accessibility that way as far as the elevators. We also have signage up from Pennsylvania Avenue around to the roundhouse and there's parking on site. Um, there's some future things. I'm not sure how far out they are, but uh, automobile accessibility will be better in the future. It's, I've only been to the roundhouse for the um, house house and home market, whatever the name the of the home show. The, yeah. yeah, the home <laughs> show. Thank you. Um, is there a way? I parked in the parking lot and then walked and then across the bridge and down. Is there a way actually to get to the roundhouse and park at the same level right at this building? Yes, there is. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Pennsylvania Avenue. From Pennsylvania, I always make sure we have signs up. Um, so. Yes, there is, but there's still not very much parking down there. You mm -hmm. have to go into the residential section to act to do if there's a lot of cars. They said something a minute ago that I, I guess I hadn't thought of the, the farmers market concept. You said that you got in late and farmers have made commitments to other farmers markets. That's a thing where people oh. are. <laughs> so you sign Absolutely. up. So if I'm a farmer, I, I pick which markets I want to be a part of, and then it's I give exclusivity to that. Yeah, we we we're big competitors with the surrounding markets. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say com competitors because we're all trying to do the same service to the community and bring fresh produce to the people. Um, but I mean, there's two, I guess, Shepherdstown and Charlestown Farmers Markets got a lot of the farmers. <laughs> so. Well, Shepherdstown has been very active for several, several years, mm -hmm. and they have a huge, fairly large farmers market. And they're consistent. Um, they have a consistent location. And in the past, we've been at the Burke Street parking lot. We've yes. been at the Lutheran Church parking lot. So we're really trying to... Um, get a permanent location and right now the roundhouse um, thanks to Kent Leonhardt um, is going to be uh, a, I guess semi-permanent for four years yeah we have uh, at least four years at, at that facility and we're looking on some long term um, but as far as accessibility jumping back to that uh, the uh, I guess Martinsburg is working on the curb appeal out there right now, um, right adjacent to the uh, and signage. underpass. Yeah, and signage. So. And um, you can also park at the train station. And we try to have the building unlocked um, at 10 so that people can walk across the overpass and down to the farmer's market. And if any seniors or people with disabilities need to get access to the market, they can always contact Mar Main Street Martinsburg or Martinsburg Farmers Market um, on Facebook and let us know ahead of time if they're going to plan on attending and we'll send somebody out to assist them. One of our questioners, one of our listeners asked the question, do you have eggs? Yes. <laughs> Enough eggs. They, say, they tend to sell out early, I understand. Yeah, we didn't sell out this week, okay. but um, we have eggs, and um, we have duck eggs as well. Mm. And so if you're allergic to chicken eggs, duck eggs are great. Um, and they're really cranking out the eggs <laughs> right now. <laughs> that they are. <laughs> so is there a way that um, people who are looking to buy vegetables and such can we look at online and see that yes we have peaches but no we don't have apples making this stuff up yes um if they go on to the um martinsburg farmers market facebook page uh we list the vendors that are going to be there and usually have hyperlinks to their page so and they they'll post what they're going to have available 
I know we're pretty good about it, uh, of what we're going to have at market. Um, like we had nectarines this week and some fruit that... We had a lot of fruit this week. <laughs> a lot we of had, zucchini. <laughs> we had uh, local peaches, local nectarines, um, plums. We had shiro plums. Blueberries. Blueberries. So there's a wealth of food in the county, and that doesn't get to the community. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure how that doesn't happen, but that's what we saw. And I jumped back into sort of uh, the establishment of farm markets that a lot of our farmers have are either very large or they've gone into northern virginia because that's where the market has been and we've seen so much uh population growth in martinsburg that we that's a personal conviction for us we wanted to stay in county and develop that and develop it to the point where we could really get those farms into the county and to the people that are their neighbors. Yeah, well, I think we're looking for people who are just starting out, like peop- like young, young people with homesteads that um, have excess that want to come out and grow with the market and see what's there. Because when we started out, we had, what, 50 bags of lettuce? <laughs> Our first market, we had one table, a small, uh, what, 10 foot by 10 foot canopy. Um, it was a little card table and we had bag lettuce and I think some collard greens and herbs and some (laughs) herbs and now we have a whole line of jams that we make as far as cottage goods Um, we have an apiary on the farm so we have honey we have the chickens the ducks (coughs) geese guinea hens um, now, we, these are what you provide on the lavender farm. On the lavender no, uh, Willowborn. We, we're Willowborn. We oh, well, also okay. have Lavender Lane, which is oh, another okay. farm okay. as a market okay. right now. So on our farm, we grow upwards of 80 fruits and veggies uh, through the course of the season. And that's the reason we went that big. And why we have so much diversity is to create that market for other people to come in. That's our original plan was not to be that wild as far as the number of things. Well, we had to sustain the market because vendors, other farmers were going to D.C. and Virginia. And so we had to provide a variety of produce, which it would be great if we didn't have to grow so much and let some other farmers come in and do that. Um, and you do all the um, um, all the cultivation, all the harvesting mm-hmm. and the like. So. That's very labor intensive. It's just me and Ben. We. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's mostly mostly this amazing woman here. That's, she is the farmer. I work off the farm. It's so, I guess I'm a farmer uh, part time. Sure. Yeah. So is this for local farmers? How important are the farmers markets for making their living out, as, as farmers? You can't. You can't make a living. It pays for itself. That's uh, about it. <laughs> okay. That's, but <laughs> the farm life. market is the distribution for the small family farms. Uh, what this statistic was, I think 97 or 98% of families used to be considered farmers. Now we're at like 3%. And most farms fail after two years. And that's what we want to you know, try to prevent is allow a place for farmers to go and make a little bit of money to keep their farm going because it's a way of life. And a lot of them are in it to help the community or they they see some need there. And, you know, we like having, you know, grass fed beef or um, like us, we, you know, we try to help the environment a little bit through sustainable agriculture and, Mm-hmm. So if people want to have a booth and, and sell their wares at the uh, farmer's market, how what do they need to do? Uh, go to MainStreetMartinsburg.com slash farmer's market. And there's an application. And you just put your farm name, your um, what you want to sell, and send an email. Just so is there a cap or something of a... a Let's say protected market, but that's the wrong word. Um, you can only have but so many egg vendors and so many zucchini vendors and so many. How does that work? 
right now we are an indirect competition. Um, so, like, we have gap filling types of produce, or like we have Lavender Lane Farms who does sachets and sells lavender and dried dry lavender, and we have Angel Trail Soaps who sells soap and bath items, but they're not directly related. Um, so one is strictly lavender and herbal, the other does ex extracts, and they're still homemade, but they're not directly um, com competing. So like if someone wanted to come in and sell other produce, um, that's fine, especially if they're local. Um, because we're not, right now we're not wanting to discourage young farmers and small farms and, you know, and I think people deserve that opportunity. Um, Is there a commitment for a, a farmer to be there every week for the summer, or is is it? There is a commitment. <laughs> okay. Um, as far as the the type of farming, it really is having not just one product. You'll have farms that might just have apples. That's they're only going to be there, especially if they only have one type of apple two, three weeks. Um, if they have cold storage, they could go into the fall. But we're looking for a variety of produce. So that non-competition would be like if somebody's selling heirloom tomatoes, other people could sell bushels of canning tomatoes. So we're not discouraging um, anybody that way. Um, if somebody had eggs, really to make it as a small farm, you're going to have to do eggs, chicken, uh, and some other product. Yeah. As the distribution, Ben, you mentioned a while ago, large farms. Well, there are several large farms in the area, one of which I'm thinking about, or farms market. <laughs> mm -hmm. How do they complement, cooperate, or compete with what you're trying to do? Honestly, I see a lot of cooperation. I mean, Katie and Don are amazing people. They've done an amazing job. Um, even Eli and Missy over at Spring Valley, they're um, what out of Augusta, mm -hmm. uh, so Morgan County. They're all creating jobs inside of agriculture. Um, I don't see that as competition. I've heard people say, "Oh, we have we have Kitchens Farm Market, we have Spring Valley, we have Ores, we have Taylors." That's why farm markets fail. I had somebody in business once tell me. You never sh set up a coffee shop in a town that doesn't have a coffee shop. You look at a town that has two coffee shops, and if it can support two coffee shops, it can support three. So we're looking at a different business model, but as far as getting produce out there, that's, I see them as cooperative. So we're looking at two different demographics, um, a lot of agro-tourism as far as or as farm market, they have the barnyard, they have the pumpkin patch, things of that nature. We're looking to bring that food into town um, by the small family farms and uh, get it to the people that need it the most. There's a lot of food deserts downtown <laughs> where the <clears throat> freshest food is something prepackaged from a corner store. You know, I think it's such a shame, too. I, I grew up in uh, in Northern Virginia. My mother, rest her soul, was not the world's greatest cook. I never had a vegetable that did not come out of a can. And I hated vegetables. You know, asparagus had to smear on the plate when you cut it, right? That's, And the difference between uh, the, the canned vegetables and fresh vegetables is enormous. Now, that's just step one. The difference between the engineered supermarket fresh vegetables and the fresh vegetables at a farmer's market is an order of magnitude difference. Um, tomatoes that actually taste like tomatoes as opposed to the red slime that you, you get from the really pretty tomatoes in the, in the grocery store. I think to bring that kind of freshness in, in town at a place as central as, as the Roundhouse, that's a very valuable service. Right, yeah. and we harvest our produce pretty much the day before market or the day, the morning of a lot of times. So, <laughs> <laughs> the coaching on the side. I, I know, yeah. So, I mean, that freshness, and I understand the point of supermarkets and why, uh, instead of agriculture, we selectively bred um, certain produce for that, that packaging reason or that visual. 
but the taste, the nutritional value of some of the produce can't be, you just, you can't match it. You're getting that uh, fresh collard greens. That's, I've gotten collard greens from the store and having grown them, <clears throat> now I know those are a week and a half, two weeks old. I get, I get depressed when I go to the grocery store <laughs> yeah, in, the winter, in the winter time. I, I look at their Swiss chart and I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll have you know, this is my second growing season since I've grown, since I've moved to West Virginia. Last year didn't go so well, but in the in the two summers I got my first tomato yesterday, so I'm okay. I'm proud. It's not completely red. I took it off before the squirrels could get it, so I actually could hold my first tomato. Hey, that's a, that's good. All right, so people, one one more time to get in touch with you. You, you um, what? MainStreetMartinsburg.com/slash/farmersmarket.